What's up guys, LH with Low Tech. I'm doing a quick video showing the temperature changes in the EK Water Blocks A240R, which is the, the Radeon Vega version of the A240 aluminum kit for water blocks. And this is mostly gonna be focusing on the, the Vega side because that's really what's new about it. The other stuff is the same as on the other kits. Um, but I'll show you what the temperatures are before and after. I look, looking first here at the settings that I'm using for my Vega card. I currently underclock the processor or the, the GPU on it uh, by 8%, whatever the, the default slider is here, um, leaving the voltages alone, uh, mainly since the, the the latest version of the Radeon drivers seem to be really unhappy if I decide to adjust the, the voltages at all. So minus 8%. And the reason I did this was it seemed like it would always thermo throttle anyways. So I figured if I started it lower, it was less likely to thermo throttle as we went. Looking at the memory, I actually overclocked this to a thousand megahertz. I've, I've done it higher than this before, but for purposes of this particular test and for day-to-day -day usage at a thousand has been fine. Um, and then the the fan curve going up to 3500 RPM, at past that it gets really obnoxiously loud. So using 3500 RPM and targeting 38 or 68 degrees Celsius as the temperature and with a 50% power slider, that's mostly just to make sure that we don't lose any speed due to power. So this is the before numbers. Uh, looking at the processor has an H100i from Corsair doing the cooling and on the GPU it is using the stock cooler. The processor holding about 72C uh, under load and peaking about 82 and the GPU hitting the hotspot temperatures of 104C uh, and the HBM temperature is of 61. The, these numbers aren't the same what you would see inside of the Radeon uh, settings. So 104 is not 104 according to, to Radeon, but this is what the numbers are gonna be using. And uh, you can kind of see where the product kind of the problem lies. The, the CPU is not doing that horrible under load. 72 is fine. It can hit 100 uh, or so, and it's not you know really in danger um, yet. The the CPU or the, rather the GPU is on the really high side and looking at the the, the processor clocks, the average uh, clock is only uh, 1360 with a peak clock of 1416. Um, so we were underclocked from the maximum and we wouldn't, weren't able to hold the, the 1416 to hit on maximum, which is actually not even the, the maximum that's allowed by the sliders. Taking a look at the after numbers and the CPU looks rather the same, but there's a huge different story over in the GPU. The CPU is down about two degrees, 70 C under load and 80 C maximum. Both those are fine. There was no thermal throttling or anything for the CPU. It was already under water. It was just under a self-contained unit. The GPU uh, had a massive decrease down from 104 to 60 C under the hotspot. Um, that's a massive amount. So 45 degrees almost uh, lower in hotspot temperature and about 30 degrees lower for the HBM temperatures. So that's all well and good. We also can see that the, the GPU clock has also increased. So the, the average is up to 1471, which is higher than the maximum we got on the stock cooler. And the, the maximum was up to 1494. So this is under the exact same settings as the, the, first, the first run. So it was still down clocked 8% to the, the minimum. It, just having that much cooling headroom let it go much further than it was under the reference cooler. So that's really what the biggest story is here. The, the GPU uh, and being able to pretty much get yourself a, an easy overclock just by unlocking all the extra headroom um, without really increasing any of the value. So I'm underclocking it, but I'm gonna get better results out of this than I would get under, you know, if I turned up the fan speed all the way up to 4,500. So this is really what's going, this is really what the, it's, this whole project has been about, and this is a great results, 45 degrees off the temperature, and also the, uh, the HBM. And this will let me open up the overclock even more and get some more processing power out of it 
um, and just increase your frame a little bit. So great results, nothing too, I guess, surprising if you've ever done water cooling, but this is a really kind of game changer for, for Vega since it's a really hot card. The only question now is going to be how high I can clock Vega without it thermal throttling again. And that's going to be very dependent on whether or not I'm actually going to be putting the CPU under load at the exact same time. So under our gaming situation, this actually might be a little bit better, might be a little worse depending on how the game pushes the hardware. But for the most part, this is uh, a good starting point and I'm already getting better performance than what I would get if I had cranked the fan speeds up to 4,500 RPM or anything like that, something crazy. So uh, we'll have to see how high I can get it before I start thermal throttling again. And I will share the results in the comments below when I get them. But until then, thanks for watching guys. This is LH Low Tech. And this has been a quick look at the performance results of the EK Waterblocks A240R for the Radeon Vega. Subscribe.